Hello and welcome to episode 7 of From the Wastes. We've been gone far too long, but we're back with our special introductory episode that's only 7 episodes late. And today's guest is me! As some of you know, I forgot to um, do an introductory episode for this podcast. And so <clears throat> I thought that I would go ahead and do that, even though we're seven episodes in. Um, so what I did was I, I I didn't want to just sit here and talk about me and, and, and all that. But So I went to uh, Twitter and I asked people to... Um, ask me questions, kind of a, kind of an AMA, ask me anything. And, um, so I thought that would be a little fun and, um, I can give some shout outs to some really great, uh, folks there in the, uh, post-apocalyptic Twitter tribe. And so, uh, let's, let's go ahead and begin. All right. Question number one is from at Mike is Ernie, uh, who happens to be Michael Tanner. He's a comic books and short fiction author. And uh, he's a fellow Montanan, but he's living in, uh, in California. And he's the author of Junior Braves of the Apocalypse, which is a young adult uh, post-apocalyptic comic. And Michael asks, in a collapse, what's the one non-essential item you would hoard? And I would have to say books because you know i mean the whole last librarian thing and they're not necessarily essential to, to to everyone i guess but um i would that's what i would hoard because i would be the last bastion of um print copies of books out there in the wasteland whatever yeah yeah that's what i would hoard um question number two comes from at derelict joe who is a friend of mine in France, and um, he's a musician, and he is an artist, and uh, he asks, "Who's your daddy, and what does he do?" That's from Kindergarten Cop. Um, I don't normally talk about my daddy, but if I did, he'd probably uh, be some guy who does something. Question three comes from at Atomic Desert, <clears throat> who is actually Andrew Hall. And he is a post-apocalyptic photographer, and uh, he's really become a quite a driving force in the post-apocalyptic Twitter community. And a really great photographer, um, super cool cat, really neat to talk to, uh, likes to share a lot of stuff. Um, anyway, he asks... Uh, aliens, robots, or zombies? Which is scarier and why? Feel free to reference movies, books, video games as part of your answer. I think robots are the scariest because uh, those bastards are not going to get... Well, they're going to get smart one day and they're going to realize they don't need us anymore. Aliens, you know, they could be nothing more than just like a gelatinous mass that could be taken out with salt zombies uh, well there's no such thing so I'm uh, not necessarily worried about the zombies question number four comes from at KAB author who happens to be Keith Anthony Baird and he is the author of the Jesus man it's one of my favorite post-apocalyptic books of 2018 amazing book um, he also just uh, wrote, an, or actually just published another book um, called Nexalexicon, which is actually available right now. He just put it out, I think, day before yesterday, just a couple days ago. So that's out on Amazon right now, both print and uh, 
ebook copies. And he asks, who would you most like to interview if given a chance? By that, I mean someone outside of the indie scene. It could be a famous actor, author, or director. Explain your choice and what would you want to ask them and what would you want to take away from the encounter? Um, I've thought about this one quite a bit and I would like to interview, if I had a choice, Rutger Hauer. You know, we've all, you know, we all know about him from Blade Runner and Lady Hawk and The Hitcher, and Flesh and Blood, <clears throat> but I want to talk about his, uh, I would love to talk to him about a movie he did called Omega Doom, which is one of my favorite post-apocalypse movies. And just, he seems like he would be really, really cool to talk to. There's just, there's, there's a lot of things he's done that I would like to ask him about. He was in Lex, that science fiction series back on uh, the Sci-Fi Channel in the, I think it was the late 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Rutger Hauer. Definitely. All right. Question five comes from Dr. Victorian, Melissa Dykes, author of All the Elders Orphans, another favorite PA book of mine uh, from 2016, I believe. And I'm anxiously waiting for a, another one. So, really good book. She asks, after the apocalypse, can I live in your village? Well, absolutely. If my village sucks, can I come live in yours? <laughs> Question number six comes from at the Radlands, who happens to be Ron Welch. And he was actually, I interviewed him for my uh, first podcast episode. He runs the Radlands website and various social media sites. Um, he also uh, makes hot sauce, called, and it's called Formula 47. He asks, well, he says, I'd like to hear a little more about your background, military history, and how you got started, if you're comfortable with that. Absolutely uncomfortable with it. Um, I, 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 how do I do this without making it really long and boring? Um, I grew up on a dairy farm in Montana, a child of the 70s and 80s. I went into the National Guard when I was 17. Um, I then went to, into active duty army when I was 18. Went to language school, uh, learned Russian, got stationed in Germany. The wall came down about a week or two after I had gotten there. Um, our unit was sent to Desert Storm. We were involved in the Battle of the 73 Easting. I spent, when I went in, I thought I would do my whole time and just do my time, get out you know, and uh, go to college and live my life. And uh, um, ended up doing a lot of cool, crazy stuff while I was in there. But yeah, that's, uh, that's basically my background in a nutshell. Got married, have kids, you know, work a job. Pretty boring, except for the wife and kids part. Um, question seven. What drew you... Oh, this is by L.R. Ryan. At L.R. Ryan, and then the number one. And L.R. is the author of another P.A. book, favorite of mine, from back, I think, 2014, 13, 14, um, called Rushlight. And if he's listening, I'm hoping to read something from that world again at some point. But L.R. says, what drew you into the wastelands from the outset? And what would you like to see from post-apocalyptic stories in the future? Um, what drew me into the wastelands from the outset? Just the thought of being kind of, quote-unquote, the last man on Earth. There's, there was just always something tempting about that, always something fascinating about that, that I would survive in a world where nobody else did. And then, you know, in the 80s, we had the Cold War, the threat of, you know, nuclear annihilation at any moment. You know, we had the Road Warrior, Mad Max, and all of the really awesome, horrible Italian ripoffs, and so that just fed into my, into my uh, fascination with, with anything wasteland. And then, of course, the, uh, all the, the PA books of the 80s, you know, Deathlands, Phoenix, The Last Ranger, Earthblood, um, just all of those, all of those, Blade, uh, New World, there's a bunch of them. All right, question number eight comes from at Omegs. I don't know a lot about Omegs. Bunker, fortress, or the open road? Bunker, fortress, or the open road? I, it would depend on the situation. Open road, 
You know, you're kind of a loner, no family, no friends. You're doing a lot of sneaking and peeking, um, hiding a lot. In a bunker, you get to kind of stay hidden. You go out to scavenge. Um, you do run the chance of being found and, or somebody finding your bunker. Fortress, I think my pick would be Fortress. Um, fortress implies that, uh, that you have a community of people working together. It seems like it would be a lot safer. It, uh, uh, yeah, I would have to pick Fortress if I were to... You know, when I was younger, I was more of an open road guy. You know, Lone Wanderer, Mad Max. As I've gotten older, you know, I've realized that community is important. And the chances of surviving on one's own is really, really slim. Question 9 comes from at Evan P. Author, who is Evan Pickering, again, an author of a fantastic PA series uh, called American Rebirth. And he actually, I, we talked on episode nine. Or I'm sorry, episode six. I don't have an episode nine yet. It was episode six, last episode, as a matter of fact. And he asks, if you could be one animal, what would you be? <laughs> Am I applying for a job? <laughs> um, oh, one animal. Holy cow. Probably a wolverine. Leave me alone. You know, let me do my thing. Don't fuck with me because I will literally sit on your face and eat your guts. You know. So, yeah, a wolverine. Question 10 comes from at Thea underscore the underscore egg. And Thea is a veteran and a lover of all furry creatures. And Thea asks, what was your first taste, be it movie, game, or book, that got you hooked on the genre? For example, mine was the 1959 movie On the Beach. Excellent movie, excellent book. Saw it on AMC at about age nine, and my mind was blown. Um, I've always said that my very first memory of anything PA was the movie Things to Come. I saw it on TV, you know, it's at some point, um, it was black and white. I was probably around four or five or something like that. It's probably, it's probably my, my earliest memory of anything television. And then <clears throat> as a kid, I was, you know, Saturday morning, we had Thunder of the Barbarian and Arc 2. And so those really influenced me quite a bit. Um, the Road Warrior and, you know, those, those kind of pulpy books of the 1980s. You know, those all happened when I was, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, they just really fed into, into, my, uh, into my fascination with the genre. Question 11 comes from at Mark underscore, underscore Quartery. I sure hope I say, pronounce his last name right. Mark was, is, is, is <laughs> I don't even know how to describe Mark. Mark's awesome. Uh, he was the head of department for props fabrication at Doctor Who during the Eccleston and I believe partly into the David Tennant years. Um, he's the owner of Salvaged Wear, and uh, he's a designer of PA clothing, which is a uh, uh, wearable, serviceable. It's not like you know, it's not like wall hangers. The stuff is is the real deal. Um, he was at uh, Wasteland Wa Wasteland Weekend. Uh, this year, and um, he he's a fella I'd really like to like to meet. He's he just makes incredible stuff. If you get a chance to follow him, I know he's on Instagram too. Really cool stuff. Anyway, Mark asks, what originally got you into the genre, and what is it about the post-apocalypse and all its various incarnations that attracted you initially, and why do you think it's become so popular as a genre in recent years? Um. What originally got me into the genre? I think it was... Well, like I explained before, seeing things to come on TV and then Thunder of the Barbarian Arc 2, um, there, there was something about surviving against all odds in a world that kind of wanted to kill you, I guess, in a, in a harsh, um, unwelcoming world. And being able to just stay alive by like sheer will alone um, being able to 
to stay alive when so many other people haven't haven't there's also um, I have this thing with hope I think hope is very important in in a PA world and being able to hope in a world that doesn't have any hope appeals to me um, hope is the is the one emotion that is stronger than fear and that's always really um, really stuck with me I think it's become popular because life is just this it's this rat race <clears throat> and there's this fantasy of, of not having to do anything but, sur but to survive. You know, there's no more job, no more taxes, no more traffic, no more responsibility other than surviving day to day. And I think that some may fantasize about the fact that they can get away with anything, you know, without retribution. I'm sure they would be welcomed in any raider camp. You know, and that's when we start getting into purge territory, and I think, I think that's more fantasy than, you know, part of me thinks it's more fantasy than not, but part of me, some days, when I'm reading the news, thinks that um, that's what it would be. Just absolute chaos and anarchy and people just killing each other for looking at them wrong. Um, and that could very well happen, but I don't think it would last. I... I you know, there, there's always going to be people who desire peace and tranquility. And I just, I have this hope that, that in the end, passion for life will always win. And, uh, yeah. Question 12 comes from um, Atomic Desert, Andrew Hall. He asks, what does 11811 stand for in the URL for your website for my WordPress site? from the waste11811.wordpress.com or forward slash wordpress.com, whatever. Um, it comes from the the movie Metropolis and worker 11811, uh, his name was Georgie, worked at like this, uh, this large clock that was some kind of like electric routing device. And he had to keep his hands... He had to keep the hands of the clock matched up to lighted bulbs continuously for his entire 10-hour shift. Uh, you know, at one point, he collapses in Frieder's arms, saying, The machine! Someone has to say it, the machine! And that always... I've always kind of just kind of compared that to life. You're just... You're, you're always trying to play catch-up. You're always trying to... Trying to... to just stay at it and um, you just try and like hell to keep up with everything you know from a kid you're trying to keep up in school with the homework and the tests and the you know and and it's just all through life you're you're just you're you're trying to keep up so yeah that's that's always resonated with me question 13 again comes from Andrew Hall and he asks what's your favorite Twilight Zone episode time enough at last without a doubt my absolute all-time favorite Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> I guess, funnily enough, um, most of my favorite episodes are the Burgess Meredith episodes, and The Obsolete Man is is one of my favorites as well. That one's really good. Question 14 comes from at Swallowed World, who happens to be Tyler Bumpus, an author of uh, one of my favorite PA books, uh, the Swallowed World series. Tyler is, he is smarter than your average bear. This guy, his intelligence doesn't scare me, intimidates me. Really smart cat, really good writer, and I, again, I anxiously await the next book in that series. Tyler asks, what are the three greatest influences shaping you and your ventures? They can be people, events, or works, but at least one must be a first-hand influence Hoy. Uh, well I, did. I would have to say that the, the, the first influence in my life was my mother um, I remember mom always had a book in her hand everywhere we went All she was always reading and I attribute my passion for reading you know from that probably my second biggest influence 
would be uh, my best friend growing up, and we remain best friends today. His name's John. John Dye. He was my moral compass. Um, I was not a perfect angel <laughs> when I was a kid. And if it weren't for John, I would have gotten in a lot more trouble than I did. I actually never really got in that much trouble because of John. He just, he was really instrumental in my decision-making processes when it came to deciding which way to go on things. And for that, I will, I will always be grateful. Uh, my third biggest influence would be my wife. What can I say? She, she saved my life. Literally. Literally. Uh, without her, I would not be here. She has blessed me with two wonderful, perfect little boys, and without her, I wouldn't be a tenth of the man that I am right now. All right. Question 15 comes from at Josh underscore Schubart. Joshua Schubart plays Frank in um, Amazon Prime's show The Tick, uh, the most recent, um, the, the most recent The Tick show. Josh asks, what is the best slash most accurate post-apocalyptic game or movie and why? Then tell your favorite and why. Um, as far as most accurate games, I... I don't really know of any that are, you know, really accurate. Um, I guess, you know, they're all pretty much kind of fantasy. Um, I don't, you know, I don't really play the zombie games. Um, but with them being zombie games, they're, I guess, kind of inherently fantasy. Um, yeah, as far as uh, movies, you know, you know, Threads, The Day After, uh, Testament... I would have I would probably say the day after is my favorite because I was I think 12 or 13 I was in junior high you know you had the cold war going on and it freaked me out and I still remember to this day going to school the day after <laughs> the day after the day after and that's all we talked about that's all anybody talked about you know and there we had a big deal in class talking about the movie and and all that so yeah the day after is my favorite and uh, and I think they all, you know, threads the day, the day after a testament. They all, um, I think, are fairly accurate in their in their uh, representation of of what a nuclear war would be like. Um, question sixteen comes again from Mark Cordery. Mark asks, "What would you have in your bug out bag? <laughs> what wouldn't I have in my bug out bag?" <laughs> um, I don't know, you know, I'd have the typical stuff, uh, Cheetos, Yoo-Hoo, some really good toilet paper, not that John Wayne stuff, um, probably my, my Devo cassette collection, um, I don't know, my favorite fountain pen, you know, just normal, normal stuff. Question 17 comes from, again, from Atomic Desert, Andrew Hall. Business Planning 101. Answer the hard questions and the rest is easy. What are your goals for From the Wastes? Plan for future plans for future shows? What motivates you to pursue this endeavor? Why is it important to you? What hole in the market does it fill? What makes it different? My what are my goals? I'd say my goal is to spread the word about authors filmmakers, books, movies, TV shows within the genre that I really like. Um, you'll generally never see me talking about things I don't like. Um, I don't do five worst PA shows, five worst this. I don't do worst of lists. Um, my plans for future shows, just, you know, <clears throat> interviews with creators uh, within the genre. Um, what motivates you to pursue this endeavor? Motivation. What is my motivation? I guess my motivation has always been just if I can get one person to 
to see or read something that I enjoyed and have them enjoy it too. That would be my motivation. What hole in the market does it fill? I have no idea. I'm not really sure. I guess I'm not really sure what that question means. I don't know if, I don't know if it fills a hole in the market. Uh, what makes it different? <laughs> it's probably no different than the umpteen hundreds of other websites, podcasts, whatever out there. Um, I'm not selling anything. Um, I'm not asking anyone for money, I guess. Um, I'm not, yeah, I don't, I would say I'm not selling a product, but I guess I kind of am because the product I'm selling is other people's creations. Um, you know, spreading the word about this guy's book, this, this lady's book, this, this movie. Um, yeah, I guess I hopefully, hopefully that answered those questions. Question 18, again, from Andrew Hall (laughs) asking, are you still up for more questions? Yes, I am. He says, I've been searching the PA, or I've been searching for PA-related websites and came across a bunch that are no longer active. Why do you think so many PA websites and social media profiles have been abandoned? I know exactly what you mean. Um, On Twitter, when I first got on, and even still to this day once in a while, I'll go through and just search for hashtag post-apocalypse, dystopian, you know, and... And, and, and you'll find a lot of accounts that are just defunct. They, there's no longer any, any activity on them. And I noticed that a lot of them popped up, you know, when, like when Fury Road came about. All of a sudden there was this huge influx of, of PA accounts. And then they just kind of petered off. You know, yeah, they, they, they seem to go in spurts, when there's, usually when there's a major uh, PA thing that's going on movie wise or TV show wise or something. Um, I think like most things, you know, people get excited about something and they, and they get online and, and, and then that something kind of, you know, people lose interest and due to whatever, maybe they don't like the, the caustic nature that kind of comes with social media. I'm not going to lie. There's been times I've thought about packing my bags and leaving, but I know that I'll be back. Because they, I have met just so many amazing people, and 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 have become friends with them, and and I just I I can't bear the thought of just leaving, you know, um, even though I've wanted to sometimes. Um, I've been addicted to the genre for forty years, you know, thirty to forty years, and you know, yeah, I've just I've met. I don't get to talk about the genre in real life with anyone here. And so, you know, it's certainly an outlet for me. You know, for me, the good outweighs the bad. And um, I know I'll be around for as long as I'm around. So. All right. Question 19 comes from at Mr. Underscore Bad Mac, who happens to be Mark Axon. And Mark asks Alanon. Why is he your favorite? And for for anyone that doesn't know, Alanon is the name of the of, of the, a character from Terry Brooks's uh, Shannara series. He's he's um, he's kind of the last of the druids, which um, I don't want. To, they're not they're not wizards. They're uh, they are magic users. I don't really want to compare them to. Gandalf, but it's sort of kind of like that. Um, he's just a badass, you know, he's this kind of a lone wanderer guy. And, uh, yeah, I think al is, is really a fan favorite. I think everybody really loves al And so, you know, it's kind of like, uh, kind of like everyone loves, you know, the fourth doctor, Tom Baker, kind of the same thing, you know, universally loved. And, uh, Mark, <coughs> excuse me, Mark actually went to a con in England and got to meet the actor that played uh, Alanon in the uh, TV series of Shannara. 
and he got me an autographed picture that I have framed sitting on my wall right here. So, Mark, thank you. All right, question 20 comes from at BitWarVets. And BitWarVets is a uh, vintage video game... Um, um, I don't know if they have a website. They, they certainly have a Twitter account. And uh, husband and wife, and they have a podcast, very good podcast. And it's just about vintage vintage and uh, retro video gaming. You know, the 8-bit consoles and 16-bit consoles. Um, they ask, what is your favorite iteration of zombie abilities and why? I.e., classic Night of the Living Dead or Z Nation types. My favorite iteration of zombies. Um, I would have to say I, I like the fast zombies because they actually scare me. Uh, the slow, wandering zombies don't really, they don't really scare me much. What does bother me about the, the zombie thing is the hissing and moaning and grunting and, and noise that they make. Um, it really, it really aggravates me because they're not, okay, A, zombies aren't real, okay, B, but if they were real, they're not breathing, so there's no air moving past their vocal cords. To, if anything, zombies should be farting, okay? They are getting gas built up in their intestines. So, you know, you get, you, you, you had these hordes of zombies that are going around hissing and, and, and all this stuff. No, you should have hordes of zombies farting. Would it be funny? Yes. Scary? No. But it, but it would be funny. So, I don't know if that answered that question. I hope it did. So that's the 20 questions. Um... I want to thank everybody for for uh, asking me those. I'm sorry that it has been... I haven't put out an episode since, I believe, September. And um, October and November have just been difficult months. Had some health issues that popped up, and it's kind of affected my... I don't know if it's motivation or ability to sit in front of the mic and and do an episode. But I, I found the motivation today, and um, I hope that, uh, that the listeners um, have stuck around. <laughs> I thank each and every one of you that have commented and, um, and liked my, my, my little thing that I do here on the Internet. And uh, I wanted to take a moment. I should have prepared better for this. Um, I wanted to thank some folks who have given me reviews on my podcast. You know, when I started doing this, I've wanted to do it for a long time, and I've, I just haven't had the guts. And it wasn't necessarily I was worried about people listening, but what I was worried about, what I, what I continue to be worried about, is whoever I'm talking with, the guests that I have, I, I'm worried that they won't like the finished product and I don't want to bring any embarrassment or any negativity to them and their and their product the latest review uh, comes from Miss Vi I don't know who that is I'm not I'm not familiar with that who that is but but if she's listening thank you so much for this um Miss Vi says, this podcast has something for everyone interested in sci-fi, post-apocalyptic stories, and writing. Evan is a longtime devotee of all things post-apocalyptic, and you'd be hard-pressed to find someone more knowledgeable. Well, I'm not, I'm not that knowledgeable. Um, just as great is his personality and rapport with the folks he interviews. Excellent stuff. Thank you so much, Miss Vi, for that. I really appreciate it. I really do. More than you know. Okay, well... I think that that I think that that does it for today. Again, I'm sorry that uh, that I haven't been uh, that I'm a little late putting this episode out, and I'm hoping this winter to 
um, to, to talk to some more folks and, and get more episodes out. And uh, again, thank you all so very, very much. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention real quick uh, was that um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the new bumper music that I have, or the new intro and outro music that I have, uh, I decided I, I was gonna. I asked a couple people if I could use their music, and um, they're just they're they're busy doing their own stuff, and I totally I totally understand that, and I even I thank them for even entertaining the thought of uh, of uh, helping me out, and so I decided that I'm gonna make my own, and so I, <laughs> I I'm not a musician, but I downloaded GarageBand and uh, just started playing around with it. And uh, kind of came up with a little thing, and it probably went through about 30 variations because I couldn't stop messing around with it. And uh, I finally came up with something uh, that I liked. And so uh, the music that uh, is at the beginning and the end of the podcast is uh, just a little something I made uh, in GarageBand. So uh, um, that's it. And um, thanks again for listening. And until next time, take cover and take care.